Greetings and Greetings and salutations. My name is JW608, and today I am playing Tower Unite. More specifically, I would like to explain the basics of emulation. Yes, that's right. Emulation was added to Tower Unite. And I would like to go over the basics. First of all, we're going to talk about uh, the in-game equipment needed from the toy shop, but we'll get there in a minute. Then, I'm not going to chicken out like some other people and tell you, oh, I'm not going to tell you where to get some games. No, I'm going to show you exactly where you can get some games. Oh, yeah. Then I'm going to tell you where you can put those games. Specifically, which folders in your Steam library that you're going to need to put your uh, your games. And then we're going to show you how to, uh, how to load them up and play them in Tower Unite. I will not be going over advanced stuff like save states and weird settings or, or any systems that require BIOS. That's beyond the scope of this. This is a basic get up and get running. So you're ready? All right, let's get up and get running. So first of all, we need some stuff because you just can't emulate sitting here in the plaza. So we're going to head over this way. That is, once you get off the subway, take a right. I always take a left, but take a right. The Songbirds, and to the left is the Toy Shop. This is your first stop, the Toy Shop. You also might need to hit uh, Central Circuits. Anyway, in the Toy Shop, you want to go to Retro Gaming here, and it has Arcade Racing Cabinet, Bruiser Arcade Cabinet, which so far I think has been my favorite. The Duper Party Con Super System, a Game Station Global. The Masher Arcade Cabinet, Mega Exodus, The Mega Wavescape, Party Con 3D, The Platformer Arcade Cabinet. You'll want some retro gaming cartridges, although they are not strictly necessary. The Retro Gaming Computer, Spacefarer Arcade Cabinet, The Standing Racing Cabinet, and the Super Party Con Interactive System. And they're various from 3,000 to 14,000 units. So you, oh, I'm sorry, 20,000 units. So you're going to want to play some mini games. But that is not all. We are going to then head on over. We to the. Now that we're in the arcade, we need to boogie on over to Sprite Guy here at the Asteroid Belt. And I believe it's under games. You can get the Arcady Digital Entertainment Device, the Deluxe Racing Cabinet, and Game Junior as well as the Tabletop Arcade Cabinet. And these cost tickets and not units. Uh, and it's going to cost you a lot of tickets if you want these. I only got the Arcady Digital Entertainment Device game and Game Junior. I won't be showing you the Tabletop Arcade Cabinet or the Racing Deluxe Cabinet because... I don't want to collect another 20,000 tickets just for this. All right, so that is where to get the equipment. The next thing is we need to get some games. All right, so now go to your favorite browser, whatever that might be, unless it's Safari, then go re-examine your life choices. So we want to go to, hold on, let me pull up my notes. Uh, the address is mamedev.org slash r-o-m-s roms it is these are roms for free download mame is one of the big arcade emulators i believe it is what um uh the libretro uses for arcade emulation in tower unite and elsewhere now mame here has a bunch of these that thanks to the generosity of some original creators of the classic games that mame can emulate these games have been released for free, non-commercial use, and they're hoping to get more. Uh, you do not have permission to uh, distribute, it's only on this site, but I'm taking you to this site, and you can get awesome games like Circus, Robot Bowl, Car Polo, Sidetrack, and Ripcord. Not all of these aren't going to work quite right. I mean, they're from 1977, and you're trying to run them on a fake arcade cabinet and and uh 2023 ish so what do i want to do if i download these well let's grab car polo which was like the original uh the original uh rocket league and they have some cool images of the of what the arcade actually looked like hey i didn't know it was a, a tabletop huh. anyway 
so you can download you understand that these ROMs are images are for non-commercial use only so don't go be selling these you download it and it's going to want to download it to downloads you're going to tell it okay like you're going to tell it save all right and you can do that with any of these here or all of these here uh i know park hat's not too bad starfire is it's a basically a bootleg star wars flight sim thingy gridley is i'd never really gotten to gridley um what's the other one i like targ isn't bad either anyway you can uh you can try these out yourself but that is just the first sight. Now we need to go on to the next one. I'm just going to paste it. Romhacking.net slash homebrew. Homebrew? What is homebrew? Homebrew are uh, games people made, like, from home and uploaded. And they have various uh, platforms. Some of these are going to be um, questionable and their their actual usability but or their actual legality but we're not going there we want pure homebred uh, homebreds homebrews like anguna here anguna was is a uh it's a top-down adventure one for the game boy advanced and you just come down here and where's its download yeah download right there download and there's a whole bunch, and you can probably sort by platform. Yeah, sort by platform. Let's grab a NES. Go. And here are all the NES um, games. I recommend Blade Buster. Uh, Nest Snake. Is it this one? No, not this one. The other Nest Snake. Uh, Land Hero. D-Pad Hero. Lots of people like those, but uh, I, I never really got into them. Uh, falling Down, Hot Seat Harry, all Frogger 1K, it's a whole bunch of stuff. And these are just um, Land, Landmaster and Lawnmower, I like those. And these are games people have made, and they are put out here for, for use. They're homebrew. Uh, they made them because they like making games. Ah, Nest Snake. I like Nest Snake. Homebrew of the Reefs, which follows the gameplay of the classic Snake game. We'll probably be using Nest Snake a lot today. And the free Freedom Man, just, or Freedom Man, I guess Freedom Man is better. Uh, oh, no, give a review. Oh, who did? No, 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 Matrix Z. Matrix Z released it, and you can go and download this perfectly fine now be careful on these sites to make sure you're getting the homebrews all right but now i can hear you say but jw i don't want no homebrew nonsense i want like a real game well, nest snake is a real game i'm offended you called it otherwise but i understand it and i got your back although you ain't gonna be getting these for free all right so we need to go boot up steam but you want to come up here to search, and you want to type in Sega. The Sega Mega Drive and Genesis Classics. That's what you want. And yes, that's not my birthday. And this is the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis Classics. I have it and the whole bundle. Um, let's check the bundle information. Some of the... You can get buy these games in usually in a bundle... Uh, they're about a dollar a piece, and they're all these classic Sega games like Vector Man and Altered Beast. You got Alex Kidd, Echo the Dolphin Jr., uh, Alien Storm, uh, there's Sonic 1 Knuckles, and all these wonderful games. Whole bunch of them. Okay, so you're buying them on Steam. How do you, how do you play them on Tower Unite, you ask? Well, that's the beauty of these. You see... They're uncompressed ROMs. What do you mean they're uncompressed? So we come into our library to the Mega Gro Drive Classics. The Mega Sega. Anyway. Uh, we select it. Now if we want to right click, we want to manage Browse Local Files. And that is going to bring up ye ol. Come on. At least on Windows it's going to bring up the install location for your copy of Sega Classics. 
what you're going to want to do is uncompressed ROMs. Yeah, and when you buy them, you bought the ROM. Except uh, Tower Unite or Libretro can't read a .68k file, but that's easy enough. Uh, you come down here like if you want um, Alien Storm. You can't use an SDG, I don't think. You just type it up in. I'm going to say no because I want to be able to play them in this game. This game uses the new format. But yet you just change it to a bin and then drop it. So you have a little work changing all these to bins, whichever. I Actually, I think I bought these on a on a bundle. Watch out because the Sega Mega Drive classics, they go on sale all the time. So you you can probably find them. All these were $10, $15 at some point. I don't know. No promises on the prices. But it is not exceedingly expensive. So you got all these games, and I think I've already prepped Sonic, but that is for not right now. So what do you do with them? That's the big question. We need to come to the Tower Unite page here, or yeah, well, you're listing in your library. Right click, manage, browse local files. And here, you want to go to Tower, Libretro, ROMs. And this is where you put them. So, for example, I downloaded Carpolo. Now, you need to remember which system they are. So, Carpolo's an arcade. Oh, look, there's Carpolo, Circus, Gridley, Ardat, and Robbie. Those are ones I've, I've already downloaded. And under, where is it, Genesis Plus GX, that's where I put my Sonic W. And I believe I have, yeah, Aguina and Butano Fighter. Those are a couple of the homebrews. And a handful of the homebrews for, for Nestopia. And just place them in the appropriate. Like if you have a Game Boy Color game, you slap it in here. All right. And that's it for outside of uh, Tower Unite play. And I'm not getting into systems any BIOS, so things like... Um, like your PlayStation and things like that, we're not going to talk about those. You're going to have to work that out yourself, because, uh, anyway. Yeah. So, now what do we do? Well, I will meet you back in Tower Unite. All right, so here, I have some uh, some of the equipment lined up, and we have our, um, here's our racing, racing one, and when you're actually playing a game, the racing wheel turns and music and all that jazz. Here's the Bruiser and a couple of the other arcades. Then here are all the consoles. And here's the computer, the uh, retro computer. And this is the fancy, um, what, arcade from from the uh, arcade. And that's what they look like. Now, what can you do with them? All right, so we're going to start off with the arcade. So if you hold down Q and right click and edit, and you have all these wonderful uh, options, like you can change the color of the, the cabinet itself, like down here, like we can make this, I don't know, bright yellow. You can change the trim to make that like green. Yeah, bright green. Oh yeah. Then you get the um, stuff here. Now I want to change the marquee because if Lip Retro recognizes the game you use by its file naming convention. It'll slap the prop, the appropriate marquee up there, but it won't do side art panels, and but it will do the idle screen. So if you're gonna worry about this, only do worry about side art and panels. So let's grab a texture. Let's throw that one in, and yeah, for the panel as well. What texture is that? Texture I got on. Oops, edit. It... There we go. Texture I got off of Wikimedia Commons. It's a testing screen. All right, so for these arcades, you can set them up like that, edit. Then we want to go to Libretro and Browse Game. And you can choose whatever you want. This is an arcade, but it doesn't have to be an arcade. Well, let's load up Car Polo. We'll show up. Hold on. Stop that. Go away. And now you can get E to play. There we go. Game over. Deposit coin. Deposit coin is is uh, right shift. 
right enter is start. See in the, the deck, it actually starts at the button. And then Z, X, C, and V are these buttons here. And then your arrow keys are your joystick. See the joystick and the car moves. And you can move them around with your mouse as well. You move them. Oh, there we go. It is X. X moves. Okay, red score. Yay! And apparently it didn't recognize car polo because it didn't you give me the appropriate um, marquee. And you may be asking, where's the sound? Well, car polo, I don't think actually had sound. So, all right, I'm done playing this game. What can I do? You hit left control and walk away. And if you're, and the game keeps playing. So they're going to fight over that, that ball. And hit G to end the simulation. Simulation. The emulation. Let's try another one. Like, um, no, let's try um, Nest Snake. I like Nest Snake. And you close it. There we go. It's going to start playing Nest Snake. Enter start. It says start. Start. And then you can. There you go. Whee! All right. And then if you hold down left shift, that will bring up this menu of safe states and joystick modes and keyboards and all that jazz. You can just shut down the whole shebang and walk away. And you can do that with uh, all of these. They all work about the same. Now, the consoles, these are a little different because they don't have a screen attached. And they also use these cartridges. So let's uh, let's take a look at the cartridge. Drop the cartridge. So if you hold on your Q and right click, edit. You've got variations, so you can have. Uh, oh, where to go? I told him, stop that. No, it fell on the table. All right, so we're gonna put it here. I'm just gonna look at it. Edit variations. You can have like uh, all these. I'm going to disc, a floppy disc, uh, the old Game Boy thingy. We're going to use, I don't know, um, use this one. And you can do whatever canvas you so desire. We're going to use our uh, test screen. And it, actually, we can clear that because if, if, um, if Lib. Lip, uh, lip retro, if it recognizes it, it will add its own art to it. So now we have a cartridge, and you can let's see. Well, I guess we have to set that up. Ah, my cartridge! We're going to have to set this up. I right. Oh, there it is. And see, you put it in there, you check game, and it just spits it out. I did that by right-clicking somehow. Anyway, I think it's easier once we have one set up. So, I've set up the classic retro gaming with the big chunky TV and the wooden cabinet. I actually had one of these growing up. Anyway, we have our TV. Let's turn it on for fun. And let's go to condo inventory. Uh, let's not look at the TV so we don't have to worry about the media thing. They're under Toys Interactive media and here you have all of your different consoles oh i didn't have the mega who's gonna watch it out so we're going to use the mega who's gonna watch it here and we want to make sure it is a there we go when you get close enough to the tv it plugs in the rca jacks and you're ready to play except you're not ready to play because there's no games in here you can also turn on and off the controllers Adjust the volume, uh, turn on and off scan lines and the glare and all that. All right, so, you want you? No. Just throw it at it and hit the button. Yeah! Now we're playing lawnmower. Oh, yeah. Homebrew game about mowing your lawn. Before you run out of fuel, which I just did. All right. All right. So let's 
in that simulation, eject the game, and I won't play Lama. So let's grab another another cart. And let's edit this one. And let's go. Oh, let's grab Sonic. And Sonic isn't named properly in this. So it's not going to give us our proper canvas. Oh, no. Throw it. You have to throw it left click. Now, look at there. And it remembered I was playing Sonic on this machine before. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's lovely. Oh. I remember this. Whee! There you go. What if you wanted to restart it? Well, uh, let's get out. Hit it. Reset. There you go. There's your Sega screen. Awesome. And notice the TV has... Oh, okay, the TV doesn't. Or does it? Hold on. It's... Yeah, the TV has scan lines. They're not very prominent, though. And you can edit things like the glare, the desaturation. So if you wanted to play... Oops. If you wanted to play Sonic in black and white, you could. Now, you don't have to use these cartridges for for these games. You can just load them up naturally. Let's uh, get some Butano Fighter up in here. Except let's edit that. And... Oh, it's not using the TV. Okay. It's using the console's settings here. Okay. Let's edit high glare. Black and white if you want. And you can turn off the extra controller. And adjust the volume. Alright. Now sometimes when you sit down to play your console, it um, does weird things. So you'll, you'll have to figure that out yourself. Now this is another homebrew. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a... Shoot them up. We got gotcha. you. This has a very Game Boy Advance feel to it. So whoever did this did a good job. Yeah. Shoot all the things. <laughs> and if you want, you can just get up and leave it. Awesome. Well, the sun is setting in this world, and I believe it is also setting on setting on this video so thank you for coming and joining me oh, oh, oh by the way this is a bug i have noticed i haven't reported but i have noticed after i play an emulation game my crosshair disappears not that it's a tremendous deal just that it disappears oh apparently i was playing snake on that machine cool so thank you for joining me oh, 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 oh before i go there is one more thing all of these are client side so, what does that mean? I hear you cry. That means if you bring your friend over and you want to play some Butano Fighter, too bad. Because it's not going to share the emulation with with anybody else in your condo. It's just you. So when you get out your Game Gear Jr. and you try to load a game... Now, this one's a little different. I guess I forgot. And Game Gear Jr.'s... I don't think I've had it work perfectly all the time. There we go. Here I was trying to get ready and to leave and... Oh. This one starts weird. Oh. Come on. I have not had much luck with the uh, mobile devices running properly all the time. Red score. All right. And you can just carry it around. And the same with the uh, GSG. I'd forgotten about those. Those are tools in your toolbar. You just... I've also noted... Oh, I disappeared this time. Last time I swapped between the two and one was out, uh, just stuck in the air. Oh, by the way, I'm a skeleton with a monocle and a top hat. I like this game. Anyway, holding down the shift button, that is what gets you here to the game select. And again, it doesn't have to be a GSG game. It's just anything. 
and it sometimes there we go sometimes takes a bit all right all right so i have been jw608 this has been tower unite and hopefully i've helped you uh helped you along in your your retro gaming journey and i wish you the best of luck and i will dig you cats later